On Instagram, I was asked about my thoughts on worldview, in particular on faulty worldviews and how this relates back to the idea of the reprobate mind, which often comes up in Christian circles in particular. Now first, we have to define our terms because worldview simply refers to the collective sort of ideas that we each have about how the world, the universe works. The more coherent our worldview is, the more all of our beliefs fit together and make sense, whereas an incoherent worldview uh, is the opposite. We have ideas that conflict with each other and maybe don't match our real lived experience. And from that context, a faulty worldview is one that does not fully line up with reality. And from that perspective, I will argue, we all have a faulty worldview because it's not really possible for humans to fully grok the universe around us. And so we're left with an approximate version of reality that allows us to function. Now, if we accept that as a reality, then we can move on to say that a healthy worldview is one that generally works for our function and allows us to be open to new information to grow and change. In contrast, rigid worldviews are the ones that become unworkable. Now, coming back to this concept of the reprobate mind, that is a very specifically Christian idea because it specifically comes from Romans and refers to someone who is sort of morally reprehensible and who God has rejected. And so it only makes sense in conversation if we're talking specifically about a healthy worldview being one that is fully aligned with Christian ideals. But let's take a step back so we're not just going into a religious discussion for a moment and say, is a faulty worldview aligned with morally bad behavior? And to that I'd say there's actually some psychological truth to that because we do know that from a psychological perspective, humans don't really do things that go against their morals. Instead, humans typically have to reframe the situation so that the action that otherwise would go against their morals suddenly in their own mind doesn't. And frankly, one of the easiest examples of this is still the Holocaust. Because in order for the Nazi party to do what it did, they reframed the concept of Jews, for example, as being inferior. So that instead there would not be the murder of humans, but of some inferior damaged cancer that had to be removed from the world. And so perhaps my answer to your original question is that the so-called reprobate mind might require a faulty worldview in order to act, but a faulty worldview does not require a reprobate mind. Thanks for the question. Let me know what you think in the comments.